Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's use what we learned in the previous couple of videos, the general solution to a second order partial differential equation. Let's use that now to find the solution to the 1D wave equation, the general solution for that. We know that this is the 1D wave equation, so if we take a look at the reduced or simplified equation we were working with on the previous video, we can see that if we let A equals 1, B equals 0, and C equals minus 1 over C squared, C being the speed of light, the velocity of an electromagnetic wave, then we can go ahead and see that this is really exactly the same thing as what we have over here. And so then to find the general solution, we need to find the solution to the equation uh, b over a is equal to minus b, so minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4c times a, all divided by 2c. Remembering that the square term of that general, uh, different, that general uh, quadratic equation had a c in it instead of an a. So, at this point, let's plug in what we have and solve for this equation. So then we get the following. We have minus 0 plus or minus the square root of 0 squared minus 4 times c, which is minus 1 over c squared, times a, which is equal to 1, all divided by 2c, which would be 2 times minus 1 over c squared. All right, let's simplify that. So this becomes equal to... Uh, this is 0, so we have a plus or minus the square root of, uh, that would be minus times the minus is plus, so we end up with a 4 over c squared, all divided by, right here we get minus 2 over c squared. If we simplify that even further, that gives us equal 2 plus or minus 2 over c divided by minus 2 over c squared. Now, of course, we have a fraction divided by a fraction, so this becomes plus or minus 2 over c multiplied times a minus c squared over 2. Now, notice that this negative is somewhat going to be negated by the fact we take the positive or negative solution of that. So, therefore, we can simply say that the 2's cancel out, the c cancel out with that c, and so we end up with plus or minus c. And if we then realize that we're going to express our solution in terms of lambda 1 is equal to, let's say, plus c, and lambda 2 is equal to minus c, and then realize that the general solution of the equation, u of x and y, or in this case, x and t, is equal to u as a linear function. Let's see here, that would be a linear function of p. And then we said that this was going to be equal to uh, f of, that would be x, plus lambda 1 t in this case, and uh, plus f of x plus lambda 2 of t, basically. If you don't like it like this, you could probably put a g there, but it doesn't matter. It's two separate functions, so let's call it function 1 and function 2 so that we don't uh, confuse that. And then realizing that, we can then say, all right, that means that uh, we can then replace lambda 1 and lambda 2 by c and minus c, so this is equal to a first function of x plus c times t plus a second function of x minus c times t. And so these would then be the two general equations. And this can also be written as follows, since of course the functions are basically linear functions of p, we can then say that p1 is equal to x plus c t, and p2 is equal to x minus c t. So these are two different forms of the solution, and here we can say that u as a function of x and t can be written like that. So there's different ways of presenting the solution. Again, this is the general solution to the partial, to the second order partial differential equation under these conditions, representing a one-dimensional wave equation. Of course, if you need the exact solution, again, what you need to do is put in some boundary conditions, some timing conditions to get a more exact solution, but this definitely represents the general solution of the 1D wave equation, and that is how it's done.